Hey everybody, uh, this is Josh Castleberry, owner and operator of Castle Coffee in downtown Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, this is another uh, part of our brewing series. Um, this time we actually, it's, a, it's something a little cool, um, is actually a like Castle Coffee recipe um, that we have come up with on our own um, for a, a French press. Um, so yeah, today's brew method will be a um, French press that you'll see um, pretty uh, it's pretty common. Uh, it's it's also known as kind of like the gateway brewer for like craft coffee uh, because it's a really simple way um, to kind of put in coffee, um, you know, to grind it, put it in the brewer, fill it all the way up, and then just let it sit, plunge it down, and you have your coffee. So it's kind of a let it sit and brew type of brewer. Um, but uh, yeah, but today I'm going to show you kind of our own version of this recipe. Um, and the whole point of um, kind of tweaking it a little bit was because of the... Um, the sludge that usually gets left over after you do your your French press, um, and and if you don't know what I mean by the sludge is um, when you pour your coffee out and you you know if you ever had a French press before and you drink it and towards the end you have kind of that little bit at the end of your cup that comes out um, because the French press has a metal filter um, it lets a lot of fine grinds and oils through um, that will actually um, be in your final cup um, and any brewer with a paper filter. Um, those that paper actually helps absorb those oils and finds um, physically can't get through the the actual um, filter itself so something that we thought of was was this recipe um, and the only thing about it is you have to add one more thing to it and it's just a filter um, so think of it as like your your fellow filter or your chemex filter or your v6 v60 filter um, you know all these other brew methods that you that you normally use have a filter. Um, think of this as like a French press filter. Um, so the only additive is just a filter. Everything else is just kind of um, as you you kind of uh, you know manipulate as you actually brew the coffee. So the uh, the filter that um, we actually found and, and kind of used um, got it from Amazon, but you can get it on Walmart. Um, and, and it's really just a oversized tea bag filter. Um, and it's uh, yeah, it's paper or so yeah, it's kind of a paper esque um, type of filter. Um, you, the idea is that you fill your French press with the coffee, um, tie it close, and you'd almost steep it like tea in your brewer, but you use the plunger as your agitator. Um, so it helps to kind of get the coffee moving. It, it gets all of the, the flavor and, and oils and everything to kind of disperse, um, and it creates a full body cup of coffee that's actually really flavorful. Um, so yeah, so it's, I'll kind of show you guys how we do this step by step, but um, but the only additive yeah of this of this brew method is actually just the filter. Um, so what we do for a French press and what we've kind of tried is a, a one in thirteen ratio. Um, so if you watch any of our other videos, we usually do a one in fourteen, one in fifteen. But for a French press being a full immersion um, brew method, meaning you brew with the same water the entire brew, you don't pour fresh water each time. You brew the entire brew is with the same water. So a full immersion brewer, um, we found that we like it just a little stronger, um, and it really brings out some really nice body and flavor. Um, so we, um, yeah, so we do a one in 13 ratio. We do 55 grams of coffee in, 720 grams out. So our, our guide for this brew for the French press is good for two 12 ounce cups of coffee. Um, so 720 grams is uh, exactly two 12 ounce cups or 24 ounces total. Um, so what we're gonna do, and kind of the, the base things you'll need is gonna be your kettle. Um, this is one of the only brew methods that you actually don't actually for sure need a gooseneck kettle. So all the other ones like the cone brewers um, and, and the flat bottom brewers, really you you know you kind of want a, a, um, a gooseneck kettle. But for a full immersion brewer, um, and especially the French press, you don't actually need a gooseneck. We are gonna use one for this for this uh, brew video. But if at home you just have like a, like a tea brewer with a big spout, um, you can totally use that for this brew method. Um, and so that's kind of one of the nice things about the French press and our, our, our guide is that you, it's a little more flexible. Um, so yeah, so you'll need a, a kettle, you'll need a burr grinder. Um, if you have a blade grinder, um, I would recommend um, if you were to upgrade anything in your system, it would be the grinder um, to get a burr grinder. Um, so they creates very, it's two burrs that work against each other to create very even um, particle size. Um, so when you brew, it's even extraction. Um, if you use a blade grinder, it kind of chops those beans into inconsistent sizes, and you will get inconsistent extraction in your brew chamber. Um, and, and you can actually taste that in the end of the cup. Um, so I would recommend a burr grinder. It doesn't have to be an electric one. It can be a hand grinder. Um, they do make a little cheaper um, you know, burr grinders that you can buy as well. Um, but a burr grinder, a kettle, and then a scale. Uh, and the scale we're using is a, is a time weight combo scale. So it shows the grams and the time on the same scale. 
but you can use just a regular gram scale um, that you use to weigh food and your phone timer that works just as well. So yeah, so we're, how we're gonna start off is we're actually going to um, weigh out 55 grams of coffee. And today we are using our Wash Columbia, uh, really nice kind of tropical notes, um, blackberry. It's a really, really um, well-rounded coffee. Um, and I think it's perfect for a full immersion um, kind of brew method. Uh, so I'm weighing a little more over 55 grams just because we lose a little bit in the actual grinder itself. So I'm gonna take that 55 grams, pour it in the grinder. And for grind size, um, you wanna do more of a medium to coarse grind. Um, and we're gonna go kind of right in between um, where it's not super coarse, it's not super fine um, or not super medium. We're gonna kind of go right in the middle um, and you can actually adjust your grind size um, at the end when you actually try your coffee. You can adjust grind size then. Um, but I would recommend not super coarse, not medium fine, just kind of in the middle. Um, and so we're gonna grind that. And the nice thing about this, um, this whole setup is the cleanliness of it. Um, that's a, a pretty typical um, thing against fresh presses is just that it's so dirty, um, so hard to clean. Um, when you pour it all out, you know, you have this grounds everywhere. Um, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that coffee and we're actually gonna pour it into the filter, just like that. You're gonna cinch the top just like that. And you're gonna put it into your brewer, but you're gonna hang this part over the side, like on the top like that. And when you put your lid on, it's actually gonna cinch it closed so that the brewer doesn't open up, and you, or the, sorry, the filter doesn't open up, you don't get grinds all in your cup. Um, so what we're gonna do first is, once we put the coffee in there, once we cinch that filter, and I'll have links to the, this filter, the exact one we use in, in the video, um, or in the, in the description. Um, but any, basically any like oversized tea bag will work just fine. Um, but we find that this size we really like. Um, so you're gonna take your water, your kettle, uh, at 199 degrees, and we're gonna do a bloom. So we're going to start your timer, and you're gonna pour the, on the base of that filter, trying to get all those coffee grounds submerged in water to 100 grams. And we're just gonna try to get all of it just soaked. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna let that bloom for about um, 40 seconds, um, 40 to 45 seconds. Uh, and so what it's doing is releasing all those gases. Um, I do still like to do a bloom even in a full immersion brewer. Um, I, I tried both methods where you just pour water straight on and let it brew um, all together for four and a half minutes, but I do like the bloom in this specific brew um, style. Um, just, I, I feel like it brings a sweeter cup in the end. So after four second, 40 seconds, um, we're actually gonna fill this thing all the way to 720 grams. Um, so if you have like a big tea kettle, um, you can fill it all the way up really quickly. Um, with a gooseneck kettle, I just kind of like to go um, in circles and just try to get everything uh, as submerged as possible and as soaked as possible, um, just so we can create the best extraction uh, in, the, in the final product. So we're gonna fill this all the way up to 720 grams, which again is the two 12 ounce cups, so 24 ounces total. Uh, and you'll kind of see the tea bag was gonna bubble a little bit and that's just the, the, the gases are kind of trapped in the actual filter right now. Um, and so that's what we'll use the plunger for in just a second. Um, but the, uh, the nice thing about this is that once we use the plunger, we just kind of let it sit um, for a couple minutes um, and uh, just let the magic happen, which is kind of the nice thing about French press is just kind of a, a sit and wait type of brewer. Um, so once I get to 720, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my top, make sure that this is cinched right there, and I'm gonna take my plunger, and I'm gonna push it down, take this off the scale, I'm gonna push it down all the way to the bottom. Make sure that this doesn't actually go all the way in, because that will push down just a little bit. You're gonna pull it up, and I'm gonna push it down one more time, just try to get everything out of there, and then I'm going to pull the plunger about halfway, because you'll see the bag will want to rise. All of the gases and all the air bubbles in there are going to want that thing to rise, but you want that filter to stay in the water to brew the entire time together. Um, and so, yeah, so I got this over the side so the bag doesn't open up. I pushed it down twice, and then I lift the plunger up halfway just so that if it tries to rise, the plunger stops it, and it's just going to sit there and brew. And we're going to let it brew 
so around four minutes and 15 seconds. Um, and uh, this, this, t this kind of brew style is totally determined on um, your like speed of um, how, you, how fast you plunge, um, how long you wait. The other brew styles, um, a lot of it has to depend on, on how fast you pour and everything. Um, and then, you know, grind size. Um, so if it finishes really fast on other brew, brew methods, you know, you'll know to, to find it up. If it, um, if it finishes really long, you coarsen it. But with this one, because it's um, because we're not actually pouring fresh water on each time, um, the grind size um, doesn't affect the total, the end time of your brew, if that makes sense. Um, so everything that you do from here on out is gonna be completely um, dependent on how fast you actually plunge and pour. Um, uh, and then it just kind of brews together all in the same brew chamber, uh, which is really nice um, after this point, you know, you can kind of let sit, set your timer, do something else and come back. Um, so that, that's one of the nice things about a French press. But what I really like about our method of doing this one is that once we're done, all we have to do is take out this um, filter right here and throw it away and your Chemex is completely clean. Um, so there's no like grounds or anything at the bottom. Um, and this, because of that filters in there, it does catch all those oils and those fine, fine particulates. So there, you won't have any sludge in the bottom of your French press. So you'll have the full immersion feeling like the mouthfeel and the sweetness of what people like the French press for, but you won't have all that grittiness at the bottom, which is why I really, really love our, our kind of way of the, how we figured out how to use a French press. Um, so we're coming up on four minutes and 10 seconds. So like I said, around four minutes and 15 seconds, we're going to take your plunger and you're actually gonna do what we did at the beginning again and just push down and you're squeezing out any of that flavor. And this is all for agitation. Do it again. And then I do it one more time, all the way to the top, all the way back down for good measure. And at four minutes and 30 seconds is when you're gonna take your top off. You're gonna take those beans out. This is what I meant with easy, easy cleanup. I just kinda like to hold it above just a little bit to get all that water that's trapped in there out. And then all you have to do is just throw that away. So now you have two 12 ounce coffees worth of, of brew and it's, I mean, the color is a full immersion um, type of color. It's, you know, not super clear, but it's not really watery. Um, and it has no, like, no, none of that silt or anything at the bottom. It's completely clean uh, and it's really, really flavorful, um, which is really nice. What I love about this, this kind of method. So if you have a French press at home, um, no matter what size, this is kind of a bigger one. They do make smaller ones as well. All you have to do is just get the oversized tea bag filter. Um, like I said, I'll post in the description and you can make this with any other type of, of, um, of French press. Um, all you need to do is just use that plunger for agitation and it creates a really, really beautiful cup. Um, so yeah, I, I hope this helps. Um, yeah, I hope it didn't add any extra um, things for you to do with your French press. Um, the idea was just to add one thing, which is the filter, and then the rest is pretty self-explanatory um, and pretty simple to do. Um, so you're not adding a ton of extra work in the morning, um, but it creates a, a perfect cup. So if you guys have, yeah, if you guys have any questions, please email us, um, DM us on Instagram, give us a call at the shop. Um, we would love to, to answer any questions you have um, and hope you guys enjoy your, uh, your French Post coffee. We'll, uh, we'll see you guys soon. Thanks.